there everybody, my name is Coach Chad Dogs Club on board Built for Theme Park News and welcome to a Theme Park News from Update. This is from Bush Gardens Williamsburg and yes, after a couple of days rest, we are back with the videos. Uh, we've got a brilliant Theme Park News update coming up from Bush Gardens Williamsburg. We've got loads of other Theme Park News updates including news, construction updates, loads of things going off in the Theme Park world over the last few days which is fantastic. So make sure you stay tuned for all of that by liking the video if you've loved it. Comment down below your thoughts, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. And uh, let's get into this video then. So this is on 2021 and yes, BGW, they've done it. They've done it. They've hit it again. They've got a brand new coaster coming. Um, now this is just um, what we found out. Now I want to give a big shout out for the images in this video to BGW fans. Uh, I'll put a link to the articles, uh, the first one and then another one um, in the description down below. There's two articles on this so uh, make sure you go and read both of them. Uh, the information here will be coming from the first one so let's, let's just get started, let's just get into this and all the information is from the BGW fans website so uh, that's this, this is all their information. So. Let's start by putting the first image on your screen right now. Fan Dabby Door Z. And the first image uh, is, well, the raw blueprint uh, for uh, the uh, project. Uh, and they did say if it is a bit overwhelming, don't worry, we're going to break it down. Uh, so let's simplify the plan by removing some of the extraneous information and highlighting all the footage shown. On your screen now found W Dorsey so our next step is to estimate which of the footers in the map above will most likely link together to support a single segment of track sometimes this is challenging but thanks to the spread out layout of BGW 2021 coaster this process is really straightforward this time around on your screen now found W Dorsey um, yeah basically it's just you know, this, this, this is just going to be a fantastic ride, isn't it? it, it you can already tell it's going to be fantastic. Uh, the only footer pairings in the map above, uh, where the, the confidence level is below, say, 99%, are at the two ends of the course, where the triangle shapes are, because uh, the footer paths just end with triangular footer arrangements, and we can pretty safely assume that both of these elements are spikes of some kind, segments of typically vertical dead-end track, however, uh, there was a, there was a, like an update uh, on this, and um, it seems like the latest updates are saying that one of those ends are not fully straight. They are in fact one of them is a like a spiral, like you see on Wicked Twister. Um, we can reliably predict though that the elements at either end of these courses are well, obviously first we know it's spikes. Then we've got a spiral uh, rumor going around. Um, so the triangle structure at either end of the course is indicated as spikes, but of course one triangular structure indicates a spiral. Um, so with support pairs established, all we need to do is connect the dots and lines to get a rough, accurate top-down layout for the coaster. Here it is on your screen now. Find out bit Dorsey. Look at that. This is going to be fantastic. Oh my god, this is going to be brilliant. Uh, better yet, we can take the layout and overlay on the actual site. So let's do that now on your screen now. Find out what So for those of you who don't know where this project is, basically, uh, this has been built behind the Bolton and across the Rhine River from Pantheon. Uh, this is on the old site of the old uh, custom looping coaster, Drakenfire, uh, which has been closed for many, many years now. Uh, so it is replacing this particular attraction. Uh, with a pretty solid hypothetical track layout established, what can we gather from the coaster? First off, the layout confirms that this will be BGW's first ever shuttle coaster when we theorised it back in October. Riders will complete most of the course forwards and then again backwards. Secondly, the station area is wacky. So you can see, you can see uh, in the bottom corner of the image the sort of station we're looking at here. Uh, the course seems to diverge and merge with the longest straight section towards the bottom left. And based on suspicious looking proposed concrete pad spot back in October, we guess that these areas are likely some sort of track switch segments. Likely the same type of track switch used on Pantheon. Uh, the footers revealed in the latest filing all but confirm that assessment. 
BGW's uh, new 2021 coaster appears to feature three track switches in total. Two as part of the rise main course and one to send the trains to or to retrieve trains from the coaster's maintenance shed. So that's a very nice thought there. So if the large spike near the top of the layout uh, utilises the full 355 feet above grade, which is 435 feet above sea level height allowance that BGW requested of this traction, this coaster is going to be like, unlike anything else the industry has ever seen. Now, this also says to me, world's first giga launch coaster. Now, um, judging by the footer patterns in the middle of the second straightaway leading into the giant spike, we believe that the track in that valley should be around 60 feet above sea level. If the estimation is accurate, uh, from the spike's lowest point to its highest point, we could be looking at a 375 foot height delta making BGW's co this coaster arguably taller than Red Force. So this is going to be a Giga Launch coaster, which is mad, absolutely mad. Um, now, one other thing um, is that there's no top hat on this ride. Now, this is because of Pantheon. Pantheon got a top hat. I think they've done this to avoid the top hat. But uh, when I sort of look at this, I see this as like a... Um, a new generation variation on like a, an accelerator coaster like a Kinda Car or a Top Fuel Dragster. This is like that without the top part. It's your accelerator launch coaster. Uh, so filling in the blanks. So we know that the BGW Project 2021 is likely a monstrous launch sort of coaster with spikes of some sort. Uh, and a sort of, of course a spiral at the other end. Um... Additionally, we can see that it features two long straight sections connected by a couple of curves. And we know the stationary is really complex, but we really don't know how it works. And now, sadly, since we're really dealing with the foundations of the plans at this point, we can't really answer any of those questions with any degree of overwhelming confidence. But I think it's worth our time to explore options afforded to us by the existence of all these questions and contemplate some possible solutions. So let's have a look then at the station area on your screen now. Find out Aussie. Back in October, there was a proposal for the solution of the station in which trains enter and exit the station in reverse. Uh, now, the idea was that the train and the station were back up to th position 3 in the map uh, on your screen uh, and hold there while the other train stopped to position 1 were back into the station. After this occurred, both switch tracks uh, could flip to the other position and the dispatching train, now at position 3, could launch the down the full length of the launch section and out into the course. So. Thanks to a newly discovered direction of travel in the arrows in the project station floor plan, obtained and leaked back in August last year, we can now say with a fair degree of certainty that the original solution to the station area was incorrect. And we now believe that station blocking is essentially opposite of what was proposed previously. Once the train out on the course ends its run, it should come to rest at position 3. I hope you're following this. <laughs> the, other station, the other train in the station position 2 then departs forward through to the switch track to position 1. The train returns to the station to unload guests and travels through the switch track in front of position 3 and back into the station. So, um, I hope you got all that information about the station. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's a very complicated station, very complicated. Uh, now going to the first launch, so given that we now are such positive that there is a second spike at the back of the course, so this, I believe, is the uh, triangular one, the spiral one uh, that we're looking at here. Uh, it seems very likely that BGW's 2021 coaster starts with a swing launch of some sort, like a multi-pass launch a la Pantheon, and or ends with a swing break. Nearly coined term for a multi-pass braking setup, similar to Tempesto. Uh, setups like this allow a coaster to burn a, a build up or burn off most energy or more energy in a short area by utilising the same launches and or brakes multiple times in a row on subsequent passes. Another thing to note uh, it, about the long launch section that runs parallel to the ride station, it might have a mid launch speed hill or two. So you see things on like Pantheon during its mid course swing launch. Um, there's like a hill type thing on Copperhead Strike, second launch at Carowinds. Um, so I think we could be looking at some kind of like launched hill, I guess. Launch speed hill. We don't have direct evidence confirming or denying the existence of a mid launch hill at this point. But there is a bit of an uneven looking distribution of footers at two points throughout the straightaway. Thus possibly seem worth noting. So uh, just to sort of point you in that direction. 
um, Hidden Valley launch. I put the uh, the one with the actual conf uh, the actual full layout in, on the site, uh, just so give you guys an idea of where we are. The Hidden Valley launch. So at the far end of the course, between the curves and the giant spike, there's a long straight section of twa track that twack track uh, that, judging by the footers and terrain in the area, seems to be both low to the ground and relatively flat. Uh, now there was a note of the area back in October but failed to really analyse it very closely and now I think looking at this I think there's a second launch hiding down there in the valley. Now there's a few items to point off to this. First off, even if we assume for a minute that the speed required to navigate the two turns, the valley and the spike could be achieved via a swing launch at the start of the ride. The turn radius reflected in the layout would almost certainly result in unrealistic forces being exerted on the riders. This could be potentially be my gate mitigated by raising the altitude of the turn substantially, but I don't believe the required height is reflected in the foot at all. So secondly, there is a suspicious little building that keeps showing up in every iteration of these plans. Now I'm going to put that image on your screen now. Find out Dorsey. The only time we can have seen a small rectangular building shoved right next to the straight relative of the same of the track, which is a launch, in, if, the, if and when is the launch involved, it's fairly safe to say that this small building on stilts is the middle of the valley will house the ride hardware for, for the second launch segment. So it could be a booster launch that propels riders straight into the enormous 355 plus foot spike. Um, rumored to be between 355 feet and 375 feet. So 355 up to 375 feet uh, rumored to be that spike. So between the launches then, one of the easiest to decipher, I'll put that uh, pun on site on your screen now, back again, there you go. Uh, <laughs> so one of the easiest to decipher aspects of the layout plan is the curved track that connects the two anticipated launch segments together. Given the increasing spread between the footy, footer pairs, throughout the right curve and until about halfway through the leftward U-turn, we can surmise that the track is likely gaining altitude throughout this whole area. In the second half of the leftward, leftward U-turn, the footer pairings, uh, quickly condensed, signaling a notable loss in altitude, and this happens in coordination with the start of the valley, which we where, where we believe that the second launch will be located. Putting these things together, we have what appears to be a banked rise to the right, followed by a quick transition to the bank rise to the left, which then flows straight into a curving dive down the ravine towards the second launch area. And given the speeds likely involved throughout the portion of the coaster, both heading forwards and backwards is pretty unlikely that the left U turn that actually overbanked turn. Uh, so we're looking just at a normal U-turn. It's not an overbank or anything like that. Um, now the spikes. I mean, it, it, it's just it's brilliant, isn't it? Now the question is, why on earth would BGW build a coaster with spikes the year after Pantheon, a coaster that already features a tall vertical spike? Um, now that's definitely something that the park can definitely answer when it gets announced officially by the park. I know that I, I believe they're denying uh, the sort of calling it fake news and that, but we kind of we kind of asked that about you know Pantheon and stuff like that, and it came true. So you know it could be just a deliberate attempt for the part to sort of you know ver the enthusiasts off for now, and then it'll just get announced. Um, now plans can change. I'm not going to lie, plans can change, as we saw with the uh, this rumor about the one of the spikes being transformed like a spiral, like a wicked twister spiral. Let's see the point. Uh, so uh, we're not going to hold our breath. Just yet. Uh, so let's establish another assumption here. The ride is manufactured by Intamin, but we still don't have direct proof. Now, if this, is, uh, the, if we haven't seen any, well, we haven't seen Intamin's name on anything yet. But given the two by two train layout, the way the footers are designed and arranged, sharing essentially every perceivable characteristic of Pantheon. The existence of multiple track switches during the course, an apparent swing launch start, and honestly, just the sheer heights and speed, we feel very confident this will be an Intamin project. And that kind of goes along with the rumour that I've been suggesting for a while in past videos. I think Intamin will be the manufacturer of the project. I think Intamin will do a two coaster in two years for Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Uh, so how does that establish in assume back to the spike situation? And now, Intamin has designed three basic genres of spikes, vertical, beyond vertical, and spiral. This year, when Pantheon opens, BGW will have a backwards vertical spike, and that still leaves a lot of spike flavours unexplored in Williamsburg, though. Um, now, the first, the smaller spike, the first spike, um, which I'm going to put on your screen now, find that bit Aussie, 
The floor layout here is very basic with just a straight line of triangle behind it. Now we anticipate that the spike will be relatively short. We tend to think that makes a spiral spike um, potential, not completely ruled out, but potential. And of course, especially with the, the rumor that it could be a, spi a spiral spike, but we're not going to talk any more about a spiral spike. Uh, that said, we do think that a beyond vertical spike is possible uh, as well. Obviously, we have the massive spike up there. Intamin has shown in the past that they are willing to build short beyond vertical spikes with minimalistic support structures in the past with their surf rider models. Uh, now it's time for the big one, the 355 foot tall tower at the far end of the course. The footer pattern for the river, 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 the Rhine River adjacent spike is radically different than both 2021's small spike and Pantheon's backwards vertical spike. Now we've highlighted the area of the footer pattern where the spike will be located in the image below. On your screen now, find Abidazi, look at that, doesn't it look fantastic? Let's take a moment just to note how enormous the footers for this are. I mean, they're massive footers, aren't they? Comment down below if you think they're massive. Uh, the three light grey squares around the dots that form what appears to be an arrow pointing up and to the left, not only are they enormous footers, but also note just how spread out they are. Regardless of the specifics of the track shape and the sheer scale of this element will be downright monumental, and I couldn't agree with that more, BGW fans. There is another really interesting difference between the foot pattern and the smaller one at the other end of the coaster. The line of foot approaching the structure deeply bisects the triangle formed by the main support structure footers. This suggests that the coaster will actually travel up through the middle of at least part of the triangle formed by the main supporting structure. The footer pattern isn't the only detail that suggests this either. Assuming this is correct about the existence of a hidden valley launch, to keep the forces realistic, this coast will need every inch of track possible for its vertical pullout from the launch into the spike. And an easy way to get some extra horizontal space is for the coast to reclaim it from the spike support structure by using the structure's depth to its advantage. So, let's have a look then, putting it all together. So we have the theory about the spikes. Um, so basically how this layout works then, I'm going to put a, a full labelled uh, element layout on your screen now fan dabby dorsey look at that beauty um so you got the station area the switch tracks and the storage track so you got the back spike got the block brakes the launches the bank drives right the u-turn possibly overbanked but not confirmed uh but most likely going to be just a simple u-turn and you have the main massive spike uh and, it, and like i said i said this earlier i think this is an answer to Red Force without having to put in a top hat. This is like did not this is gonna be like the you know you see these top thrill dragsters and these kinder cars like the strata coasters and things like that where it's just a top hat and it's either a hair time hill into the brake brakes or it's uh, just a simple brake run like top thrill dragster compared to Kingda Car uh, and Stealth down here at Thorpe Park. I think this is the answer to that but without having to put in a top hat. This is like the new sort of uh, strata accelerator coaster but not sort of it's like a giga launch coaster kind of thing so uh, but I, it kind of reminds me of that without the top hat really uh, that's what I'm getting from this so uh, that's all that even mentioning that we're talking about a coaster that could legitimately be very well one of the tallest and one of the fastest in the world I won't say the tallest and fastest in the world but I definitely say it's going to be um, the tallest and fastest uh, well, the world's first Giga Launch Coaster, and I think that will be a good title for Busch Gardens Williamsburg to have. I know, I know, fans wanted a Giga Coaster. I know they wanted a B and M Giga or something with a bit more Orion feel to it, or Fury Three Two Five, or something like that. But I would still recommend this coaster. And I think we were kind of looking at an accelerator um, ahead of a B and M Giga. We were looking at more of a Red Force type coaster, but I think we weren't expecting something like this. Uh, a coaster of this scale comes along once in a blue moon, and apparently the next one's destined here at BGW. So, uh, I think BGW fans will be very happy. Uh, when you combine the coaster's thoroughly unique nature with its anticipated stats in your head, you start to wonder if any of this is even possible. Is there actually enough room to make launches and pullouts large enough to safely accommodate the speeds we're talking about? And the, are the radii of the turns between the two launches even feasibly safe given the speeds? What would a coast like this even look like? There's no existing that. Uh, now, um, there is actually a video 
uh, online. I'm going to put a link to it in the description down below. So there's three links in the description down below. There's the first article, the second article, and of course the video. So uh, two respected No Limit creators, Jake Anderson and Calvin from Intin305, worked on a pre-creation project, and they've actually used the plans and all the things like this and created a replica of what the coaster would look like in No Limits 2. So again, link for that's in the description down below. Please go and watch it. Uh, I've watched it. It's going to be fantastic. Um, now in terms of actual stats, in terms of speed, um, the concept includes a roughly 375 foot tall beyond vertical spike, thanks to 20 feet of additional height afforded to us by the valley before the tower. Uh, I really consider this interpretation to be optimistic, not unlikely or unrealistic, mind you, but optimistic. So um, don't take that fully, take that with a pinch of salt, that 375. Uh, the back spike is roughly 105 feet tall and also slightly beyond vertical, but again, this is the rumour with the, with the spiral spike. Uh, and the height estimate may be slightly conservative, but the, I think the fact that we may decide to be on vertical may be the result of some optimism or hope. Uh, we even have a hard time imagining the vertical backwards spike nearly identical with shorts to Pantheons, and it drove uh, them to differentiate in a little, hence the beyond vertical back spike. Uh, so as far as launches go, we have three of them in the mock-up. We have a, so this is all about the, the video link in the description down below. So we start the coaster with a two-part spin launch backwards at 45 miles per hour and forwards at 75 miles per hour. The mid-course booster launch down in the valley is set 90 miles per hour in the video below. Uh, in the description down below. I believe the final 75 mile per hour speed after the swing launch is a fairly reasonable middle of the road estimate given the turns the coaster has to navigate immediately afterwards. The value launch, however, is set pretty conservatively right now. Our second launch in the video continues way into the base of the spike, reducing the speed needed to near the 355 highest point. Additionally, the trains are leaving about the train and the half length of the buffer at the top of the spike right now. Whether Intamin would likely to be pushing that further than that is anyone's guess. Uh, I think that's anyone's guess, to be honest. Um, now, Regardless, for a better understanding of how the train moves, there is a 32 step map of the ride flow uh, just to count upwards to follow the train's course through the track. I'm going to put that on your screen now. Fandom Adorzi, again, all from BGW fans. Um, now, honestly, I just. Uh, it's just. <laughs> I just can't wait for this. I just really can't wait for this. That's all the information. Again, all the images. Uh, the articles are in the description down below, but all the images uh, go to BGW fans. Thank you very, very much for letting me use them. Uh, you're a great website. You do you provide fantastic information for the park. Um, overall, then, from all that, from every single bit of that, this is going to be a fantastic, fantastic project and a really good roller coaster for the park. Uh, this is going to be a humongous project. Um, it's going to be a massive dealing, and I think that. Um, the park are going to do a fantastic job with this so overall then I am really excited I hope you guys are really excited about this as well basically if you didn't understand all of the technical stuff that I explained from the information on the website basically what we're looking at here is an Intamin Giga launch coaster from, the, from all this now like I said plans can change and things like that um, but from what we now, from what we know so far, what looks to be happening is an Intamin Giga Launch Coaster without the top hat, and it's going to be replaced by two spikes. One set to be the Beyond Vertical or a Spiral. The other is the 355 foot spike. So, you know, we're looking at a good, good coaster. And actually, uh, on one of the concept videos, I believe it's the actual one that I've linked in the description down below. It's actually called Dragon Spire, which I believe means Dragon Spiral. So. Um, if it's going to be, if it, if the actual project is going to be called Dragon Spire, if they, if by some miracle they've guessed the name right, we are having to guess the name right at all. Then I'll be absolutely amazed because I think Dragon Spire actually is a good name. I think it's a good name, and it sort of leads that area into the next generation after Dragon Fire left the park. So I think there's a real potential to use that name, but I don't think it's going to be the name. I think it's going to be something different. But overall. 
I think this is going to be fantastic. I think in terms of names and themes, I think they're going to do what they did with the last coaster project in this area of the park, the Bolton. And they're actually going to uh, maybe dive into the, the legends of Germany again of Oktoberfest, taking you out of Oktoberfest into this legend. Um, you know, do like a little mini plaza area to sort of take you out of Oktoberfest and into uh, this sort of legend of Germany maybe. Uh, it should be interesting to see what happens with this. So I think this, and like, like the article said, this coaster comes one in a million. This comes, this coaster only comes like once every load of years. And we've got a really exciting project on our hands and I cannot wait to cover the rest of this project with you guys. So thank you very much for watching this massive theme park news update. I hope the two day wait was worth the wait. Uh, from BGW, Busch Gardens Williamsburg on 2021. Imagine months ago doing this, doing a first video on BGW and thinking it was going to be a star flyer. Nope, Giga Launch Coaster. Uh, but like I said, plans can change and things like that. So thank you very much. Make sure you like the video if you've loved it. Comment down below your thoughts. Subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. And for now, guys, my name is Coach Child Kit and the Coach Live, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care. Have an awesome day, my friends.